Hi there, this is John for KillerPHP.com and today what I'm going to be doing is building on the auto-loading uh, tutorial that we did in the last, well, the last in this series and we're going to be looking at how we can deal with magic methods which are a really cool, relatively new feature in PHP and how we can use magic methods to cut down a lot of redundant code in our application. So I'm going to start off by just cleaning up what we did in the last video, which is going to come up later on. But for now, I'm just going to delete the uh, KP controllers test class. And also in our application path, we don't need to specify this second uh, include path. So I'm just going to delete that as well. And of course, all of this source code is available. You can download it on killerphp.com. If I refresh this again, I'll just get uh, get name John Smith. So that's working. And what I'm going to be doing now is looking at actually if we we can now change this. So instead of using com killer PHP as KP, I'll just do uh, killer PHP backslash models as models. And here I'm just going to specify models. Okay. Now, typically speaking, if you have a class, you'll find that there's a lot of time spent writing getters and setters. Now a getter and a setter, I'm going to give you a quick example of that. So let's say I've got this user class here. I can create a function or a, a, a property called address. So what you're seeing is you're seeing something that's actually protected. It's a variable that can't be accessed outside of the scope of this particular user object. And so if I want to set this address, I can't just go into my index.php file here. I'm just going to comment this out and go user address equals, I don't know, let's say I live close to the Eiffel Tower. I, if I try and do this, it'll say cannot access protected property uh, because it's protected. That's exactly what a protected property is. So often, one of the advantages of object-oriented programming is this idea called encapsulation. Basically, we hide data and we hide variables from other classes so that we have a very clear interface into what can be set and what can't be set inside of an object. However, there is, you know, a set of classes out there called data transfer objects or sometimes they're called business objects or value objects where we're basically using the object as a way of storing a bunch of data about something. And a user object is a good example of this uh, where we have a user, maybe they have a first name and a last name and an address and a phone number and, and all sorts of other kinds of bits of variable data. And we want that all to be associated with that user. So in this case, instead of just saying uh, address, you know, Eiffel Tower, uh, you, in the, you know, typically you would do something like create a public function called set address, and you would take in the address as a variable, and then you would say this address is equal to address. And I would go here, and I would say set address. and this should work and if I want to get the address I would do echo user get address and then here I would have to create a public function called get address and I would return this address and I would get Eiffel Tower this seems a little silly at this point because we're just putting stuff in and getting stuff out but oftentimes you'll find yourself setting and getting variable data and if you've got a class hierarchy where you've got different objects that are inheriting from other objects it's quite common that you'll be using getters and setters as they're called as a way of uh, dealing with uh, basically the the objects that are inherited from various superclasses. so if we think about this idea of a model before we go any further, I'm going to talk a little bit about what a model is so that we can 
see how we can abstract this concept. A model in the MVC framework usually deals with saving or persisting data. So if you have a view, which I'm just going to pull up a diagram of MVC here. So here's a very simple diagram of MVC. This is what you would call traditional MVC. Now MVC is a design pattern. And what that means is that it's essentially a, a pattern of uh, constructing an application in a way that you've separated out what needs to be saved, the data. In this case, we, we would call that the model. The controller, which dispatches requests. And what that means is that when you want to have a user access a particular part of your website, you would have them hit the controller object, and the controller object would figure out where to go and what to do. And then lastly, you have the view, which basically renders any kind of data that would be coming from the model. So we're going to actually be writing some of this code ourselves and looking at this whole pattern. In the last video, we created this user object and we stored it in the model. Now, if we go back to the user object, we can see that basically it's just setting and getting data associated with a particular user in this imaginary system. If this was a production environment, you might also have a function called save or insert or delete. And what this would do is this would actually save the data in a database. So let's take that aside for now because there's plenty of frameworks out there that will automate this process. But let's look more at the architecture of, you know, auto loading or, or sorry, of using magic methods to get and set various bits of data. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at a magic method and magic methods typically start with two underscores and this one we're going to delete get name for now we'll, we'll revisit that in a minute. This one is going to be called it's going to be a public function and it's going to be called call and call takes in a name and it takes a collection of arguments. 